I thought I'd talk about the joy, surprise, and excitement of soap operas. Um, okay, so uh, previously on The Ancient and the Restless, um, Nikki tries to share a tender moment with Archimedes, but he uh, breaks the social rules and, well, actually is her about uh, the finite versus the infinite and then computes the upper bound on the number of grains of sand that would fit in the universe. <laughs> and uh, what's interesting about this is that they had, uh, the Greek numeral system had a myriad, which was 10 to the fourth, and they could go up to a myriad myriad, and that's kind of as high, high as they would go, so uh, eight digit <laughs> architecture. And uh, so, I mean, 10 to the 63 kind of is well beyond that. So he uh, you know, had to invent big numerals. Um, and he published his uh, results in a paper he called The Sand Reckoner. And uh, that was really good. Then his rival across town, Catherine, was like, hey, I've got a big numeral system of my, of my own. And uh, you know, she has some plans for her big numeral system. And uh, you know, he doesn't want to. Uh, he doesn't want to cede his, uh, his big numeral fame. So he challenges her to count the number of cattle. Uh, there's four colors of cattle, and it's divided into uh, bulls and cows. And uh, he gives a bunch of proportions for the bulls. Like uh, white bulls are a half and a third of the black together with the yellow, and et cetera. <laughs> and then gives some proportions for the cows, uh, you know. Same sort of thing, white were a third and a fourth of the whole of the black, and so on and so on. And uh, so Catherine gets to work, uh, infinitely many solutions, because we got one free parameter, and uh, she you know, does some stuff, and then she does some more stuff, and she's like, hey, uh, the smallest number of cattle under the sun is 50 million, and you could take any multiple of this number, and it would also work. And Archimedes is impressed, but not that impressed, <laughs> and tells her that, uh, so he ups the ante and's like, hey, uh, with the white and black bulls together, they form a square. And when the yellow and dappled bulls are together, they form a triangle. So, and Catherine's like, yeah, no big deal. How hard can it be? Uh, he's like, if you can do this, then I'll really be impressed. <laughs> so Catherine knows about square numbers. She. Uh, works some stuff out, she does some factoring, she gets a, a, a result about what k should be, she knows about triangular numbers, she uh, does a few more things with the square number stuff, and she ends up uh, figuring out, hey, uh, all I need to do is find an integer solution <laughs> to this equation <laughs> where y is divisible by 4657, and that's kind of where she stops. Uh, <laughs> not really possible. So uh, Archimedes is very pleased with himself, and uh, the problem kind of goes away. So fast forward about 2,000 years to uh, French mathematician Lagrange. Um, these equations are now known as Pell equations, x squared minus dy squared, where d is some positive integer. And uh, Lagrange proved that they have infinitely many solutions. And uh, actually, much earlier than that, the Indians figured out how to do this. In 628, Brahmagupta figured out that if you have one solution, then you have infinitely many. And Bhaskara II had a method for producing that first solution. But the um, Europeans didn't know about the Indians' work, so they did it totally separately. Fermat, Wallace, Lord Bronckner, and then Lagrange came along and used continued fractions. So you might be wondering, why are they called Pell's equations? And it was just a, mis it was just a mistake. <laughs> but once things get named, they just stay. So. so yeah, what's a continued fraction? Continued fraction, you start with a number bigger than 1. You subtract the integer part, then you invert it so it's bigger than one again, and you rinse and repeat. So for square root 33, it might look like this. And a good fact about square roots is that uh, there's a periodicity. You see that this, uh, this 
bottom right one has the same result as the top right one. So this will just repeat indefinitely five and then the one, two, one, 10 will just keep going. Uh, these uh, integer parts are sometimes called the quotients and you can use the quotients to build uh, rational approximations to the square root. So you take five, five, one, five, one, two, five, one, two, one, and you can build these approximations. They get closer and closer to the square root as you go. And really fascinating, at the end of the period, right before that last one, the convergent gives a solution to Pell's equation. So 23 fourths translates to 23 four being a solution to x squared minus 33 y squared is one. Then you take powers of that thing and that gives you all the solutions. So uh, once you find the first solution, you can just keep taking powers of this quadratic integer and now you get all the solutions. Uh, okay, fast forward another 100 years and Amthor uh, finds out about Archimedes' cattle problem, uh, does all the same work and is like, hey, it's just a Pell equation and we know how to do that stuff now. So uh, I'll just use continued fractions and uh, has a period of 92. So the last convergent in that list has this <laughs> as the solution. But we need a y that's divisible by 4657. So we have to take the 23 29th power of this thing, which is, as you might guess, not computable <laughs> by a uh, human. Uh, but anyways, she has this is the smallest solution. Uh, there is 206,000 digits. And the first four of them are 7766. <laughs> Um, all right, so then we fast forward to 1965 and University of Waterloo, they got this cool IBM 7040 with 32K of memory and they decided to compute this thing. I know that's not as impressive as 434-bit uh, modular arithmetic on a Commodore 64, but um, so they, they do this. It takes seven hours and 49 minutes to compute. Um, they published the first and last 50 digit numbers that, oh, there was a group also in 1889 that spent four years computing digits, like computed 30 digits at the front and 18 digits at the back. So that was a good project. Um, <laughs> anyway, you might notice that the first four digits are 7760. So Amthor is uh, mortified that, you know, luckily she didn't try to compute more than four digits. That would have been rough. Then in 1981, uh, they get this new Cray-1 computer and they're like, hey, uh, we got a new computer. Let's make sure that things are set up right by just solving Archimedes' cattle problem, sure. <laughs> so they compute the digits in about, and do all the verification. It takes about 10 digits. And then this Harry Nelson guy is like, hey, it's never been published before, so might as well just publish like what the <laughs> solution looks like on 47 pages uh, <laughs> where the digits are like one third of actual size. Um, so I thought we would maybe compute uh, the computer right now. And I was really interested in, you know, doing it quickly. So, uh, so I wrote my code in Ruby. <laughs> so, uh oh. Don't look, don't look. Close your eyes, okay. Oh, that was close. Um, I'm glad no one looked, thanks. Uh, yeah, so we got some continued fraction stuff. Not all, that, not all that hard, you know, pretty straightforward. And then we got to take powers of quadratic integers, which is also not all that difficult to do. So uh, hard code in the solution to part one, because I was too lazy to do that part. And uh, so yeah, the first solution, we just need to compute the continued fraction convergent. And then we gotta take the 23 29th power of that thing and multiply by those other values and that's it. So we can print this thing off. Whoops, that's not what I meant to do. Whoops. So, uh, <laughs> Yeah, 0 0.01 seconds uh, in Ruby on this wimpy laptop. Um, probably we should 
I got like a minute left or something, so. Seven seven six zero two seven one four zero six four eight six eight one eight two six nine five three zero two three two eight three three two one three eight eight six 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 four two three. Thanks. <laughs>